welcome to another episode of the Walk the Line podcast. I'll be your host, Greg Sowers. And today's topic, we'll be speaking about competing, um, competing in practice, competing in games, um, some summer hockey uh, we'll touch on. And um, so, and with playoffs going on right now, obviously, I um, hope everyone's getting the chance to watch a few games, even though if you're, your team's not in it, but you always watch the playoffs and it just seems like the pace and the play is a lot higher than it is in the regular season. Um, and you might wonder, you know, why isn't it like that all the time? Well, the NHL hockey season is an 82 game schedule. And if they were going that hard uh, for the full length of the season, odds are they would probably not have anything left by the time playoffs came around. So um, those guys who get paid lots of money to do what they do and play hockey at a professional level, um, for that long of a season, um, they do take other, uh, obviously other things into consideration when it comes to their um, effort level and, and things to get them through the year. Um, some guys are battling injuries and obviously when playoffs come around, they're all trying to compete for the, for the Stanley Cup and um, they do everything they can to, to win that Stanley Cup towards the end of the season. Um, but if you're watching the playoffs, I mean, I'm sure everyone's noticed that some of the differences and um, you know, the big thing and just talking about compete level is, you know, doing all those little things that can make the smallest difference, but um, all those small things will add up into to one shifts, you know, one periods and then one games and then series. Um, so they all add up. And, and one of those things is blocking shots. Um, you know, blocking shots is not a fun thing to, <laughs> to do, uh, especially as you move up and those shots get harder and faster and, um, you know, it's a mental thing. Um, you're putting yourself in front of an 80 mile, a 90 mile per hour shot, um, just so your goalie doesn't have to deal with it. Um, and, and obviously goalies are dealing with it on a, on a game to game basis. Um, but if you can help out your team and, you know, put your stick in a shooting lane or put your shin pads in a shooting lane, just to have your goalie not battle for that one more shot, um, those things can go a long way. You see guys go down with, with foot injuries and, and blocking shots with, you know, sliding into them and things like that. Um, there is a risk to, to doing that um, 100%, but um, sometimes you got to do those little things, the things that may hurt um, to, to, get, uh, to get wins. Um, and uh, I think Vegas has the, the slogan going right now that, um, you know, to, in order for there to be victory, you have to have some pain. Um, and that's not an exact quote, but, um, you know, they're, they're using that as, you know, part of their motivation to, um, you have to battle through some stuff to get to the end goal of, of hoisting the Stanley Cup. So um, there's multiple different ways to show your compete level, but blocking shots is one of them. Um, and then the, the battle um, in corners they're you're taking cross checks, you're, you're fighting for pucks, you're doing whatever you can to, to win those puck battles in the corners, um, you know, battling in front of the net, you see after every whistle, you know, guys are getting each other's face and having that kind of aggression and, and you know, killer instinct mentality of, you know, this is this is my area of the ice and you're not going to be able to come in here the, the entire series. So kind of getting that mental edge, um, not only between whistles, but but after the whistle as well, um, just kind of setting that standard for the, the rest of the game. So um, even if you're a, a small guy with not a lot of weight on you, um, you could still have that, you know, aggression, you know, within the within the rules. Obviously, the NHL is a little different. They let pe- they let the players play a little bit more, but um, there is a, an art to being um, to winning the mental warfare um, and and battling um, in between those those whistles or even after. Um, and then because of this compete level and guys are going a hundred percent every single shift, um, you notice the the shifts are shorter. Um, you know, at, at Pee Wee's or even at Bantams, you know, some guys will take, you know, longer than minute shifts and, you know, they come back to the bench and they're gas, but, you know, for 30 seconds out of those shifts, they probably weren't moving as fast as they could. Um, but they are going all out for, you know, 30, 45 seconds, and then they're off and the next line goes out. So competing not only, um, as your for yourself, but competing with your teammates, um, again, all those little things will add up to, to wins. Um, and then I had the opportunity to actually uh, be involved with a summer hockey team um, already this summer. And um, just to kind of share an experience, we played a team, um, they were from up north, mostly AAA kids. And 
Uh, I think maybe our team had one, if that, AAA kids on our, our team. And we knew it was going to be a tough battle. But, you know, they came, the this team from up north came out and much more skilled, uh, faster. Um, and, and they had a lot of good hockey players. But, you know, one thing I was really proud of our team, and I don't know everybody on the team going into the weekend, but our kids battled and competed that whole game. And, you know, the, the score didn't, it got away from us in the first period, but it was because we were trying to play, you know, this skilled hockey game, which did not, you know, fit the way our, our team was put together. And, you know, we called them in after the first period and basically it's like, we got to start competing here. Um, and that had to do with playing physical and, you know, making that other team not want the puck. And, you know, our, our second and third period, um, we actually, if you just took the second and third period, we were tied, um, but you know, it's a three period game. So uh, periods two and three, our kids were battling and competing and, you know, laying some big hits and it definitely affected how this team from up North played. They didn't, they didn't want the puck. Um, and it's, it's not an intimidation factor and it's not like we're trying to, um, you know, hurt other players. That's never the goal. Uh, but hockey is a physical sport. And if, if you want to compete and do things at that next level, um, you know, you're going to have to potentially play physical and, and lay those lay those hits and, you know, make the other team think twice about, you know, taking that extra second with the puck and making a play. Um, and it, it was very evident when we started, you know, playing more physical and competing and, and allowing less time uh, for them to have the puck. Uh, the, the game was swung in our, our favor and we actually had parents not from our team come over and um, compliment us just by the way, you know, we, we fought and battled against a, a team that was much more, much more skilled than us. And um, kind of the conversation I had with, with our guys after the, the game was, you know, you, you can't teach work ethic. Um, and what our team showed is that we were willing to, to do those little things to compete with a team that was more skilled. Um, but when we changed our, our style in periods two and three, um, if we play like that the, the full game, it would have been a completely, completely different game. So, um, you know, just for all the, the players out there and parents, just, you know, you always want to compete and you always want to give your best. And that's kind of cliche, but um, you don't know who's watching. And if, you know, you're on a team that's um, – that maybe isn't as skilled, but you're out there back checking as hard as you can for checking as hard as you can, you know, you don't know who's in the rink watching. And it's just another thing to, you can add to your toolbox um, uh, other than your skill level. And it, it's something that's completely up to you. You don't have to have a good toe drag. You don't have to have a good shot to work hard. Um, and that kind of goes into this, the last topic. Um, it's going to, this will be a short episode, but you know, why, why do we want to see that competitive drive? Um, I mean, you should want to be competitive to, to improve at your game. And, and, you know, it's completely your choice, um, how competitive you want to be. Um, that's not something, you know, me as a coach can, can get you to do. I'm sure we can, you know, set, uh, set a standard and maybe set some consequences if you don't work hard, but, um, you know, that's something that's completely in your control is how hard you want to work. And, and pushing yourself to be better every time you're on the ice. And you just don't want to get in that mindset of only competing against the guys you're, you're playing against in that game. Um, you want to compete against your teammates. You want to be better than your teammate and your teammate wants to be better than you. And that natural pushing each other is going to make you both better and make the team better. Um, and then, you know, if you happen to be the, the top dog in your team or the top dog on the ice, um, you know, just remember there are guys everywhere around the world playing hockey, trying to make it to the NHL, trying to do what you want to do. And just because you're the best on the ice, uh, maybe for that practice or that game, you know, you better 100% believe that there is someone out there that is working harder than you in that moment and is out there trying to take your spot. Um, you know, there's, I believe there's 32 teams in the NHL and, you know, everyone's trying to fight for those 20 roster spots on each team. Um and that obviously there's a trickle down there to, you know, minor pro hockey and college hockey and junior teams. Um, it's completely up to you how hard you want to work. Uh, and if you want to compete not only against yourself, but everybody else that there is that's trying to take, take your job, take your spot. Um, and then if you're training, um, you know, you're at the gym or you're shooting pucks and you're, 
let's just say you're not in the mindset of where you're competing against someone else out there. Um, you could set goals for yourself. You know, yesterday I was in the garage and I shot 25 pucks. You know, today I'll shoot 30. Tomorrow I'll shoot 35. You know, always trying to to best yourself so you can set those those goals and those standards to realize that you are improving. Um, you know, through your your hockey career, uh, and just on a a, a basic level. Um, again, if, if you're at the gym, you know, I did 10 push-ups. Tomorrow I'm going to try to do 11. I did five pull-ups tomorrow I'm going to try to do six you know always compete against somebody whether it's someone else um, on your team an opposition an opponent um, but at a minimum you can compete against yourself and and always trying to improve um, no matter if you're on the ice or off so again just to just to recap I hope everyone out there is, is watching some playoff hockey you know those guys are are going hundred percent trying to achieve a lifelong dream of, of winning the Stanley cup. So again, don't just be a fan, try to take some, take some notes, potentially learn something from the game um, and just see what those guys are doing on a um, night in and night out ba- basis. Um, and then we, again, we lightly touched on, on summer hockey. If you happen to be part of a, a summer hockey team, um, again, you don't know who's, who's what, who's watching in the rink. Um, you know, for myself, like I'm watching other kids and other teams too as being a scout and they don't know that I scout for a couple of different junior teams. So uh, you never know who's in the rink. Always give your best effort um, regardless of your skill level because that's one of the things you can control just on your own. You know, we, we've said it before in this podcast, but your attitude and effort, they're non-negotiable, non-negotiable and um, there are two things you can control and there's nobody else that can you know, do those things for you. So stay positive, work hard. And, uh, you know, why to compete? Just make sure you're doing your very best. Um, whether it's your teammate, again, the opposition, um, you should always try to be the best one on the ice and make sure you're you're doing every everything you can to take make the most out of that ice time or that time in the gym. Um, otherwise, you're just wasting your time, your teammates' time, your coach's time. So Uh, Again, I know this is going to be a a short episode. We hope to bring on a few more guests in the future, but uh, just want to to try to get everybody out there to think about, you know, what it means to be competitive, how they can be competitive in the summer, you know, for their training. Um, And then again, make sure we're watching hockey. You can learn a lot just from watching and and seeing what the guys who get paid billions of dollars uh, do to make them special. So um, I hope everybody's enjoying the start of their summer. Um, and, and training and getting ready for this, the start of the season. Um, but most importantly, make sure you're, you're out there and you're moving and you're being active. Um, the time to start training is not the, the week before the season starts. So um, again, if anybody has any topics they'd like to have discussed on the Walk the Line podcast, um, please comment on the, the podcast um, show notes there or shoot an email to 307sports.hockey at gmail.com and we'd be happy to, to talk about it. Um, And again, hope everybody's having a a great summer and uh, we'll talk to you soon.